there, guys? It's Ozzy Grimm with the Gamers Grimm. And today we are going to take a walking tour of probably my most favorite city that I've built here on the Adventure Time server. Um, let's uh, go ahead and pull up the menu real quick so we can look at the, the map here. As you can see, here's the Adventure Time Island here on the server. Uh, where I have all of my uh, past and ongoing builds. And we are here in the city of Thorsdane. And there's a depth that I had on day 924. We'll go ahead and erase that. I uh, logged in, didn't have anything to eat before I logged out, and uh, uh, had like 20 health, and I got death skeetoed as soon as I logged in. So it was super great. But we're going to go ahead and hide... Uh, the UI for now, well, can we pull that up? Yeah. So many people have asked uh, what the FPS is uh, like here in the city. Uh, as you can see, I am at the top of the Citadel, so I am right in the heart of the city. And if I turn and look with all the lights and stuff up here, I can get about 10 frames because uh, I'm, I'm looking at the whole city. Uh, there are people who are wondering about the instances as I move closer. Uh, to the uh, docks, that'll go up to about 47,000 instances. Um, and the FPS will go up from time to time. But at the very heart of the city, with all the lights on, I only get about 10 frames. So it can get a little, little clunky in a city of this size. So for those of you who are wondering, uh, that's what we got going on there. Uh, but I can get as high as 30 if I don't have all the lights and stuff on in the city and uh, all the fires lit, that tends to be what eats up most of the performance. Uh, also, guys, if you would please make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below, as well as hit that notification button. It really helps out uh, the channel here. So we are looking down upon... Thor is Dane from uh, top of the Citadel you see here to the south we have the arena district and to the north we have what I call the magic district and then far off into the distance you can't see it is the dock district uh, the city is that big that uh, some of my draw distance uh, doesn't allow me to see all the way to the other side of the city but that's okay um, this is really just for decoration for RP, um, and if you turn off all the lights and the fires, you can get a reasonable amount of FPS, even with this uh, many um, instances of things. Though I think some people would say that turning off the lights and the fires sort of kills the ambiance. I wouldn't disagree with you there, uh, but this is just an artistic endeavor. It really is just for looking at. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll head down into the city. We'll, we'll, uh, just take a quick look back over here. We've got a forest back here. You can see a forest road that wraps around just like that uh, to the different districts. But we'll go ahead and head down through the Citadel. Um, so, And uh, part of the reason that my, my frames get so low is I decorate everything. I don't just have, I typically don't have empty shells uh, for buildings and houses. But I do think there's a couple of houses that I never really got around to decorating uh, in this city, which I think is fair, uh, as big as the city is. So we'll just head out of the Citadel here, and you'll see this really cool sort of layered thing that I did. I managed to sneak those hearths up there, and it gives off a really cool uh, and neat effect at night as you're coming up the hill. Uh, so we'll head down past the Citadel, as you can see looking up there. And uh, we have a, a little neighborhood over here. Uh, again, several houses uh, that I've built. Um, again, I try to decorate as many of the houses as I can. And I also try to uh, make them as unique and different from one another as I can. Uh, each, each home is sort of bespoke. And uh, I try not to make them all a carbon copy. Uh, of the uh, of one another so that it's, it shows the personality of the different people that uh, might live there 
but uh, I think this gate comes out here. Yeah, the gate comes out into the Magic District. Uh, this is what I think of as like the Druid's Grove, because the Magic District is all about magic and uh, training magic, but we're not going to go in there just yet. We'll end up at the Druid's Grove, but we'll follow this path here, like where the guards might go, and it has kind of an out overlook there, and I think it wraps around here. Uh, these cities get pretty big and pretty complicated. Uh, my Lake Town build is a, a city that you can get lost in. And uh, this certainly, uh, Thorsdane is another city that you could definitely uh, find yourself getting lost in. So here we have what I think of as the blacksmith and uh, the enchanter uh, for the city. And like I said, the lag in this city started to get pretty bad compared to the others because it's probably the biggest and most complex city that I've built. Uh, so I did not add anything to the trade pavilion. Normally, I would go through and, and add potions and fruits and pies, all the things that would be, uh, you know, traded here in the trade pavilion and the trade district. But like I said, in the heart of the city, it can get a little bit uh, dippy right here. This is the very middle of the city. And as you can see, it, it floats. It gets up to about 15, 17. Uh, I'll hit 20s. Uh, but it tends to say in the teens, uh, like you see here. And as we get further down, you see we're at 42,000 instances. So, yeah, I didn't add any of the typical decorations that I would normally add. Uh, like I would have added bread buns and pies here to the winter's warmth bread uh, sort of. Uh, and uh, same thing goes here for like the minor trades. I would have... I would have added uh, lots of little things and decorations and things on the wall, but I didn't do that because I wanted to keep the lag as low as I could because I think the overall design of the city was more important than all of the little details. Uh, for those who have watched some of my other builds, you know I am fairly dedicated to uh, making sure I personalize every little tiny uh, merchant and uh, house that's in the city. So. You know, the Merchant District got a little slack, a little lax on it because uh, I just wanted to save on the memory. Uh, but, you know, Delicate Delights and, of course, Ron Redacted Swanson's Good Fruit for Sale. Uh, fun little Parks and Rec thing for Square's Soup. Um, and, you know, we've got uh, some other little merchants that we would have. And, of course, we have ourselves a tavern that overlooks the city, like you see here. It looks so, and has like lots and lots of nice views that go down and look out over the arena district like you see there. Um, and I do believe that I did put, um, did I put barrels down here? I did. They have barrels for their booze that they might be serving in their tavern. So we're going to just keep on trucking. Again, this city is super big, but uh, that's pretty much the commerce district, which is the first major district. Uh, that you would run into in this city. Uh, but then we're going to go down and head towards uh, what I think of as the sort of uh, crossroads. Because if you were to go north here, you'd end up in the Arena District. And if you were to go, or the other way, excuse me, south here, you'd end up in the Arena District. And if you went north, you'd end up in the Magic District. Uh, so what we will do is we're going to just head down past uh, the original tower here, more Magic District, more Arena District. And uh, the reason we're going to go here is this is the Wharf Watchtower, or what I call the tourist uh, area that if when I do release the server to the public so people can uh, just go and play on it if they want. Uh, this is kind of what I built when I first got here was the Citadel up there on the mountain and this tower so that I could... Uh, sort of survey what I was doing and seeing how it looked from a distance from uh, all these different directions and vantage points to make sure that I uh, really got the feel of the city as it rises up uh, towards the uh, the citadel there. I really wanted to sort of build uh, Minas Tirith, uh, even though that would be nearly impossible in this game. You would have zero frames in my... my uh, Computer would definitely catch on fire if that were the case. But I did the closest approximation to Minas Tirith as I could in the same way that uh, I did the closest approximation to Edoras 
as well as Iron Forge and Lake Town and my other builds. So we'll continue down the road and we will end up in the Dock District. Uh, this ended up being probably my favorite district to build because I just really enjoy uh, the look and feel of docks. You know, I put in the grain silos and when they added the, the vines that you could plant, uh, really was able to add a lot of color to the city and uh, sort of an organic feel. And I just enjoy uh, building all these little crates and little storage areas and sort of fiddling with ways to make it look like there's an actual crane that works, um, as well as the docks. It just, this is the, the part of the city that I just, it feels mo the most alive to me um, when you really look at it as we are now, like if we come down here and there was probably a world save, but we're gonna come through here like, you know, I like to decorate all these warehouses like they're actually being used. It's probably one of my favorite things to do is to find ways to to really just make uh, the city feel alive. And it is, it's, it's an artistic endeavor, something super important to me to just make it look like people live here. And this is, this is their stuff, you know, open crates and chests. It's, it's a wonderful time. And of course, the shipwright. Uh, which is, you know, the guy that works on the ships. You dock in, you might have to to uh, get your ship fixed. So, And I do get free fish from here. So I'm going to go ahead and pick that up. Um, but we're going to continue down and through the wharf district or the warehouse district because uh, the, the entire docks wraps this whole coastline here. Um, so, yeah, it was a really good time. Then, of course, this is the inn or the uh, wayside inn that I built here. I really enjoyed building this. I wanted to make this very, you know, uh, tall and skinny, almost oriental looking building uh, that you see here that I just think just looks really good. We'll fly for a minute. I just really like the way that that looks. It's a very small and narrow building um, in, its, in, its, in its footprint, but you'd be surprised at, at how much you're able to sort of squeeze into a building like this, you know, because we'll go up the stairs here and we'll get to this this first floor. And we've, we've got two fully functioning rooms uh, on this floor uh, as well as some storage. Again, I probably would have went in and, uh, you know, decked all of this stuff out in a smaller city, but this city is just too big to put all the little potions and I'd put food and cups of meads on the table and uh, put all sorts of little trophies and things up on the wall but uh, the lag is at uh, this is at the peak of what you can probably put into this game but there's also a smaller cheaper room up here as well as the top floor so for as uh, narrow of a footprint that this thing has you know the fact that it's got you know uh, five bedrooms or five rooms for rent is pretty good I think and it's got a substantial uh, hearth and, you know, place for people to relax and enjoy the coastal views uh, that you have here. Um, and the reason that I went this way to go through the inn is, of course, we have the gate that uh, heads out of town. Uh, if you were to follow this road here, I'll take that and we'll pull that on there. If you were to follow this road here, it would go... All the way past uh, what you see here is what I call the Overlook, uh, past the uh, Prison of Azkaban build that I'm, that I'm currently working on, uh, through the town of Gale Town, and uh, to Lake Town you see there, which you can see over there. Um, it is not corrected, collect, connected directly with the Great Eye. Uh, that's another build that I'm working on that's eh, not quite where I would like it to be. Okay, we're going to go ahead and murk some bad guys so they don't break my stuff. We're going to go ahead and hide the UI again so that we can get ahead and move around. Um, so this is part of the Wharf District, but these are sort of like what I think of as larger estates. Uh, this is my house here. This is the house that I claimed for myself. Well, maybe this is Val's house. I'm pretty sure. No, this is Val's house. This is my friend Val. He's a real life friend of mine. We've been friends for 30 years. Uh, he comes on and checks out my builds all the time and typically claims a house for himself, uh, just like my friend Brad does. Brad 
is another guy, a friend of mine that I play online with, and he almost always uh, gets to claim a house for himself in every city that I build. But this is my house, and uh, I do think that this estate over here is also fairly well decorated. We'll do a little... Uh-oh. I think we need to eat some food. I'm going to eat... Let's find some of that stamina food. But even with the, you can see, even with the lag that I'm getting, it's not as terrible as people make it out to be. Like, I, I certainly wouldn't recommend trying to do, like, a boss fight or anything. Um, but you should be more than capable of walking through and just sort of exploring. And uh, my ideas of it is, is that it's like a, it's an RP server. This is where you and your friends could come and, and do some RP and, you know, pick your favorite, uh, you know, city that you want to, like, live in and kind of make it your own city, you know, and that's that's kind of my dream for it. I wish there was a way for me to to, to bake in some D&D &D elements so that people could make this server a and d, &D server. Uh, but that's all wishful thinking. I just really enjoy the artistic uh, fun of building in this game. Um, and of course, now we are entering into the arena district. Uh, I've built more houses for this particular city than I have any other city, which is why, again, I haven't decorated everything to its fullest extent because, boy, the lag would be even worse. So, but as you can see, I at least added furniture and, uh, you know, some normal stuff, but I've kind of skimped on the fires and cooking utensils and potions and foods and trophies that I would normally put into a lot of these houses uh, that you see here. They're just sort of bare bones. This one had a fire, but you know, I put beds and yeah, again, furniture and such. I didn't go too overboard to sort of save on performance. Um, but yeah, some of them got more decorated than others. Um, but this is the arena district. I wanted it to be sort of like a clustered and cloistered area where, you know, middle class kind of people to lower class people live because the, that's the arena is, of course, their most favorite pastime. Of course, we'll go ahead and take a look at uh, the windmill here in the arena district. I think it looks really cool. We'll do a little, little floaty around here. You can see it. It was a lot of fun to build that up. Uh, I didn't want to break the rock. I kind of liked where it was and sort of just incorporated it into the city, um, which is always fun. That's one of my favorite things to do is, is to work around mistakes and uh, take advantage of the natural environment as it is. Uh, so we'll go by. You can see some more houses. Uh, you guys have seen... As many houses as I've built, so we've seen plenty of them, but they are there and they are working. Of course, the centerpiece uh, to the arena district is, of course, the Storm Side Arena. It's the home of the Blood Serpents and the Ice Dragons. And uh, I will never ever build these pillars by hand again. Nope, no sir. This was this was a lot of work with these pillars. Um, fun and I think the end result is amazing and looks just absolutely interesting but all the measuring all the pillars and all the weird uh, build mechanics turning orange and red because it's it's all hollowed out you know this is not just a shallow thing you can uh, you can leave the uh, the arena if you're not a spectator and you can f go around uh, this side yeah you died your little buttholes in here trying to break stuff but if you follow these stairs up over here you can come into the side of the arena like you see here and of course I'm picking up a bunch of gold uh, it's divided into two teams there's obviously the blood serpent side which is uh, where all of the blood serpent fans and gladiators would be and then on the opposing side of the uh, underside of the arena is the ice dragons side with the uh, the ice dragon entrance being right here uh, but yeah this is the arena it was a lot of fun to build but boy was it a lot of work it was something else um, but yeah you can go out here into the arena 
Uh, me and my friends have already uh, had a little bit of fun uh, coming in here and bonking each other. Uh, and uh, I may have incidentally killed uh, one of my friend's hardcore characters because he wasn't paying attention who he logged on. But, yeah, that's the uh, Stormside Arena for the Arena District. We will head back out like this. We'll pull this up again, see how it looks. Yeah, yeah, here in the Arena District, which is probably the densest of the districts, I'm still sitting at about 10 uh, frames, uh, standing still, 10, 12, and it'll jump up and down depending on where I'm looking. I'm currently looking at the, the center of the city, so it could be a little little daunting. And then there you go. If I, I'm not looking at the center of the city, it jumps right back up to 23, 24, 25. Um, so the, this is for all those people who, you know, were concerned about what the FPS is like. Yes, in the heart of the city, it can get a little laggy, um, but that's okay. So we will pass through here. This was going to be the, the vendors. I was going to, you know, have mead and sausages and, and fish wraps for sale for any of the fans that were headed to the arena for their arena for the day of sports that they might see. So, and uh, there's a little upper area here. I should have probably just, but we'll just run through. It's really just more houses uh, that I've worked on. Just filling out all of the neighborhoods and where people live. So, yeah, see? Very, very cool. Lots of little houses. Lots of places for uh, people to live and call their own. And then this, of course, is the back gate uh, that goes and wraps around uh, through the forest area behind the city. And that's what we'll do is we will wrap around through the forest, along the forest road, looking up at the back of the citadel there. Very cool. And it will bring us around to the other side and the magic district. And so this is what I think of as the Druid's Grove. Um, if you were to come to Thor's Dane and try to learn... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and... Oop, I messed that up. Let's turn that back on. And let's see. We want to add grass. I don't like it when there's little weird brown spots. But this is the Druid's Grove. Um, and if you were coming to Thor's Dane, this is if you wanted to learn nature magic... Uh, this is probably where you would come and meditate. Uh, so, yeah, and we'll head down a little further through the Magic District. Um, and, of course, and this was probably one of my favorite additions to the city. This is what I call as the Necromancer's Undercroft. So, uh, all magic is accepted here, so even death magic would uh, be taught and trained in the city of Thor's Dane. And uh, this was such a fun little part of the, of the game to build. And it also illustrates one of the things uh, that I sometimes do and I like to talk about when it comes to doing things like this. And uh, it's this giant skull. Um, so those who don't know, this is actually part of the assets that was part of the old uh, Mistlands biome. And originally this Undercroft was much smaller and I had it all built up and ready to go. And I was going to spawn in um, these skulls. You see this, the skeleton trophies. But it had been a while since I had spawned in anything uh, to put up, like trophies and such. And so I spawned Skull 2, uh, not realizing that I needed skull trophies or skeleton trophies. And it plunked this thing down into the ground and essentially ruined all of my work. Um, I was completely crestfallen and just not in a good mood. But then I collected myself, uh, came back that afternoon, and realized that I could take advantage of this really cool, uh, you know, skull and just expanded it and, and used my mistake and, and turned it into something that I think ends up making this look so much cooler than the original one was. This is where 
the necromancers and purveyors of death magic uh, would probably spend their time uh, sitting around a giant ancient skull. Um, so yeah, that's something that I, you know, everybody should do is even, even a mistake that could ruin everything uh, could, you can always turn that into something that ends up being uh, way better than it was before. And uh, that's, that's what that was. And I really love the Necromancer's Undercroft now here in the Magic District. Such a cool little addition uh, to the city. And uh, I'm glad it happened. And I want to thank Fizzy. He's the one that suggested that uh, I add the Undercroft. Uh, having a graveyard around it because he said it looked like I was trying to build a dungeon in a really nice park or garden before so he's right i think the adding the graveyard and the glowing uh, green ambiance to the outside really adds to the uh, necromancer's undercroft and here's me building a couple of the houses that uh, out of this new stone masonry that you get with the firelands i can say that um, i'm not a huge fan of it i really don't like the way the snap features work on it um, but you can do some sort of fun uh, little artistic things with the different pillars and arches, uh, which is kind of nice, uh, but it's very limiting without doing a lot of, you know, really heavy-duty stacking um, of, of different angles and trying to get special um, clip snap points to make it work, it, it, which, it, you know, there are great builders out there and content creators that, that do that that just amaze me, but I haven't quite gotten the patience for it, though. Uh, we're looking out over the vineyard. There's not much to it. Uh, I wanted to build a vineyard, and it, it turned out well. I'm not angry about it because they did add the new vines, um, but they have to be so far apart, and there's really not a lot of things you can grow on them, and I don't necessarily like the iron gate, the iron bars for it. But I really don't see anything else in there that's that looked good. So as much as I like the vineyards, it's probably the most disappointing aspect uh, of the city build is, of course, the vineyards and the winery here. Which is not me saying I hate it. It's just I, I wish I could. I wish I had more pieces uh, to to be able to build the stuff the way I'd like it to. But I I improvise and I make it work with what I have. So. That is the vineyards. Uh, there's a nice little park that you can come out and, of course, sit here and look out over the vineyards and the sea. But we're going to continue on through the Magic District. Uh, and uh, there's some houses in here, but, of course, uh, it is a, a Magic District, so there's lots of places for teaching magic. Um, and this is sort of the uh, Magical Academy here. I was really happy to find a way to use these flametal doors. I would say these are probably the some of the most aggravating doors that they've ever added to the game. Uh, any of the major builders will tell you that they are quite a pain to really make look good or fit into a build that isn't uh, insanely huge. And of course, this is an insanely huge build, so uh, it worked. Uh, but this is a magic school. This is where people would come to, you know, you know learn magic. So. Uh, I enjoyed it, and of course there's some houses, and of course the centerpiece uh, to the Mage District, or the Magic District, excuse me, is the Mage Tower. Uh, this was a royal, royal pain in my butt to build. Um, still fun, but man, when you build that tall and you want to try to build out that much, it gets a little, gets a little crazy, I'll say that. And so it starts to fight you at every turn, and I really wanted to make sure that it had a really great overlooking uh, area. And of course, it looked like people that do magic might come up here, <laughs> as you can see. Uh, but uh, it did end up really well done with these wonderful overlooking views uh, of the Magic District, uh, as well as the scenery that surrounds the city itself. Uh, Thor's Dane has been an absolute uh, pleasure to build on. It's one of the first cities that I started. I built the Citadel really early on, um, back when Baldurok was first being built. 
and uh, I just didn't really know where to go with it for a while. And uh, I'd come back and I'd build a little bit here and I'd build a little bit there. And uh, I had all these ideas for other cities. So I would do those ideas like Lake Town got built and uh, like I'm still currently working on, you know, the indoor build, which the indoor build is super, super cool. Um, it's a very slow and tedious process uh, building an entire city of nothing but uh uh, tree houses um, and that's exactly what I'm building at the, in the in, indoor build with some like dark docks and it's all being built in the swamps so it, it's been it that's been a creative endeavor I can't wait to share uh, the indoor build with all of you guys uh, but that's still a work in progress um, but we also do have uh, the Azkaban build uh, that I've got to finish up and I do have to finish up Gale Town and uh, Portsmouth so and I have some smaller villages that I'm gonna work on they're not really big uh, they're really just there for you guys when I do release the server and then of course there is the God's Rin uh, city which hasn't technically been started it's just had some I've done some clear cutting for it uh, I'm not gonna wait to release the, the, the save file for you guys uh, for God's Rin uh, that's something that's gonna take a, a long time and a lot of work uh, and uh, hopefully at some point I can get some fans to come on and uh, do a little uh, building on God's Rin with me. That's kind of what my hope is for this server. Um, but we are, we are slowly growing on YouTube. Um, we're getting close to the point where we'll be able to maybe start building a, a fan base of some sort, which is a strange concept, but it's something that um, we're capable of doing. Um, but that was Thor's Dane, guys. I want to thank all of you for coming along. Um, and I hope you enjoyed my build. And I look forward to showing you some more of my work in the future.